upon a time, on a Christmas Eve, old Ebenezer Scrooge sat busy in his counting house. Scrooge was a squeezing, retching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sitter, a hard-hearted miser. On this evening, the office of Scrooge and Marley was shrouded in cold, bleak, biting weather. External heat and cold had little influence on Scrooge. No wind that blew was bitterer than he. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Bob! Ah! Merry Christmas. Humbug. Be gone, you miserable little beggars. Take your infernal Christmas carols and get away from my door. Sorry, sir. Merry Christmas anyway, sir. Bah! And you, nephew. What right have you to be merry? You're poor enough. Christmas? Bah! Humbug. Christmas a humbug, Uncle. What right have you to be dismal about Christmas? You're rich enough. Don't be cross, Uncle. What else can I be, Fred, when I live in such a world of fools as this? Merry Christmas. If I could work my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips would, ha, would be boiled with his own pudding, ha, and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. Keep Christmas in your own way, nephew, and let me keep it in mine. Keep it? But you don't keep it, uncle. Well, let me leave it alone then. Much good may it do you, much good it ever has done you. Christmas time is a good time, uncle, and thought, though it has never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe that it has done me good, and I say, God bless it. God bless Christmas. Hurrah! You there! Bob Cratchit, get back to work. Let me hear another sound from you, and you'll keep your Christmas by losing your situation. Yes, sir. Oh, don't be angry, Uncle. Come, down with us for Christmas dinner tomorrow. Kate will love to see you. Kate? Oh, yes, your wife. Huh. Why did you marry against my will? Be because I fell in love, Uncle Ebenezer. Because you fell in love with a woman as penniless as yourself, Fred? Good evening. But you never visited before my marriage. I wanted nothing from you. I asked nothing of you. Very well. Good evening. Oh, I will keep my Christmas humor to the last. So, a Merry Christmas to you, Uncle. Good evening. And a Happy New Year. Good evening. Mr. Cratchit, see my nephew out. This way, Mr. Fred, and a Merry Christmas to you. And to you and your family, Bob. How is Mrs. Cratchit and your children, and especially your youngest, the little boy? Tim, sir. Tiny Tim. Uh, he's getting better. Thank you for asking. Happy Christmas. Um, two to see you, mister. Good day, sir. Have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley, my partner, has been dead these seven years. In fact, he died seven years ago this very night. I'm Ebenezer Scrooge. Oh, well, at this festive season, Mr. Scrooge, we seek charity for the poor and destitute. You see, many thousands are in want for common necessities. Hundreds of thousands are in want for the simplest comforts, sir. A few of us seek to buy the poor some meat and drink, and means of worms. What shall I put you down for? Nothing. Ah, you wish to be anonymous. I wish to be left alone. I don't make merry myself at Christmas, and I can't afford to make idle people merry. I support the prisons and the workhouses. Let those who are badly off go there. Oh, but many can't go there. Yes, many would rather die. If they would rather die, they had better do so and decrease the surplus population. I see. So the firm of Scrooge and Marley d declined. It's enough for a man to understand his own business and not to interfere with other people's. Mine occupies me constantly. Good evening. Very well, sir. You've made your views quite clear. Good evening to you. Uh, Mr. Scrooge, it's seven o'clock, sir. And it is Christmas Eve. So? I suppose you want all day tomorrow, eh, Mr. Cratchit? It's not fair. Why should I pay a day's wages for no work? Tis but once a year, sir. A poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. But I suppose you must have the whole day. 
Huh. Well, be here all the earlier the next morning, Mr. Cratchit. I will, sir. Thank you, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Indeed. Bah! Scrooge took his melancholy dinner in his usual melancholy tavern and walked home through the rolling fog and bitter cold. He silently passed the urchins crowded around the fire in the streets, trying to keep warm. The icy Scrooge trudged along through the dark streets, but just as he reached the door of his dismal house, he thought he heard something calling. It was the voice of his long-dead partner, Jacob, Jacob Marley, whose ghostly face appeared on the door knocker. Scrooge hurried inside, closed the door, and locked himself in. He double-locked himself in. He checked the sitting room, bedroom, lumber room, all as it should be. Secured against surprise, Scrooge put on his dressing gown and nightcap and sat down before the fire to take his gruel, when suddenly... So, someone's in the cellar, but the doors are locked, double locked. Something is coming. Something is coming closer. It, it's, it's outside my door. No, I won't believe it. It's Humbug! Humbug, I said! Scrooge! Ebenezer Scrooge! Uh, ah! How now? What What do you want with me? Who are you? In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. You don't believe in me, Scrooge? Why do you doubt your senses? Uh, a disorder of the stomach makes them cheat. You're, you're not a ghost. Wh whatever you are. Humph! Humbug, I tell you! Humph! Ah! Mercy! I believe you! I believe you! I must! Oh, dreadful apparition! Why do you trouble me? Why do spirits walk the earth? Why come to me? It is required of every man that the spirit within him should walk abroad among his fellow men. If that spirit does not go forth in life, it is condemned to do so after death, doomed to wander the world and witness what it cannot share, but might have shared. Ah! <laughs> You are changed, Jacob. Tell me why. I wear the chain I forged in life, link by link, yard by yard. I'm chained by cash boxes, keys, padlocks, ledgers. Witness the weight and length of strong chain you bear yourself, Scrooge. It is a ponderous chain. I... I see no chain. You shall on the day of your death. Mark me, no regret can make amends for one's life opportunity misused. But you always were a good man of business. Business? Mankind was my business. The common welfare was my business. And it is at Christmas time that I suffer the most. I'm... I'm sorry for you, Jacob. Is there anything I can do? For me, it is too late. But I have come to warn you of a hope and chance of escaping my fate. You will be haunted by three spirits. Expect the first tomorrow when the bell tolls one. The second, the next night, at the same hour. The third, upon the next night, at the last stroke of twelve. Without their visits, you cannot hope to shun the path I have tread. Ebenezer, look out this window. That poor woman and her infant huddled on the doorstep below. Look, that you may see for your own sake. Ghosts. Hundreds. Chains. Just like yourself. They surround the woman. But... They're not haunting her. They're bleeding. Does she see them? Why do these ghosts lament, Jacob? Why do they wail? They seek to aid her. They seek to do good in human matters, but have lost their power forever. They wail in unceasing torture and remorse. Beware this cruel fate, Ebenezer. Beware! 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 Ow! Scrooge awoke. He was lying on his bed, still in his robe. Was Marley's visit a dream or not? He decided it was a dream and nothing more. But suddenly, the curtains of his bed were drawn aside and Scrooge found himself face to face with the unearthly visitor who drew them. It was a strange figure, like a child, yet not so like a child. It's like an old man. Psst, psst, Abney, they're Scrooge. Are you the spirit whose coming was foretold? I'm the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? Your past. I come for your welfare. Rise and walk with me. Out the window? 
But I'm mortal and liable to fall. <laughs> Bear but a touch of my hand, and you shall be upheld in more than this. As the words were spoken, they passed through the wall and stood upon an open country road with fields on either hand. It was a clear, cold winter day with snow upon the ground. Do you recognize this place, Scrooge? Why, it's my old schoolhouse. But it wasn't a place of learning. More like a prison. On Christmas Eve, the school is not quite deserted. A solitary child neglected by his friends is left there still. A lonely boy reading besides a feeble fire. Do you know him? Yes, I know. I am that child. Alone. Oh, poor boy. I wish, but it's too late now. What is the matter? Oh, nothing. There was a boy singing a Christmas carol at my door last night. I should like to have given him something. That's all. Let us see another Christmas. Ebenezer, come, come to another Christmas past, a celebration! <laughs> to say a word or two to my clerk, Bob Cratchit, just now. Scrooge, my time grows short. Quick, several years later. Ah, Belle, as beautiful as ever. A penniless girl who loved you, Scrooge. And I, her. It didn't matter that she had no dowry. We were so happy together. Until your career with Jacob Marty came between you. As you gained, so you lost. Do you see yourself? You're older now, a man in the prime of life. Your face has begun to wear the signs of care and avarice. Your eyes are greedy, the eager, restless eyes of a miser. No. No, no. Spare me this. Not this spirit. No. This music box is a beautiful gift, Ebenezer. But I realize I matter little to you. Very little. To protect yourself from a hard and cruel world, you have become hard and cruel in response. I have tried to cheer and comfort you, but another idol has displaced me. What idol could ever displace you, Belle? You now worship a golden idol. I have seen your nobler aspirations fall off, one by one. I wanted security, success, for you, Belle. I seek tenderness, not riches. Therefore, even though it is Christmas, I release you from our engagement with the full heart for the love of him you once were. No, no, Belle, don't, don't. Dear Ebenezer, may you be happy in the life you have chosen. No, Belle, Belle, spirit, show me no more. Why do you torture me? <laughs> Remove me. I cannot bear it. Haunt me no longer. No longer. The whole scene disappeared and Scrooge had himself once more 
alone, back upon his bed. He drifted off to sleep, only to be awakened again by the stroke of one. He gradually noticed a great blaze of ruddy light glowing from beneath the door. Something, Something was, was in the outer room. Hmm. Come in, Ebenezer Scrooge. Come in. Mm. Scrooge opened the door and beheld his own sitting room, transformed. The walls and ceiling were so hung with evergreen that it looked a perfect grove. And there sat a jolly giant, glorious to see. He bore a glowing torch, shaped like Plenty's horn, and held it up high, high up, to shed its light on Scrooge, as he came peeping round the door. Ha! Huh. Come in. Come in and know me better, man. I am the ghost of Christmas present. You've never seen the like of me before. Spirit, take me where you wish. If you have anything to teach me, let me profit by it. Hmm. Very well. Touch my robe. And instantly, they were transported to the streets of London on a bright Christmas day. Presently, Scrooge and the Spirit came to Camden Town, to a humble house on a humble street. This is the home of my clerk, Bob Cratchit, his wife and six children. Why are we here, Spirit? Where is your father, then? And Tiny Tim? Father's coming. Father! Father! Father. Father. Ah, Peter, Belinda, Mary, Paul, and Martha. And how did little Tim behave at church, Bob? As good as gold, Mother. And better, eh, Tim? They sang ever so nice, Mother. I hope the people saw me in the church. Because I'm a cripple, and it might be pleasant for them to remember on Christmas who made lame beggars walk and blind men see. Bless you, my son. See, mother, his heart is strong and he will get better. I know it. Oh, smell like goose. There's never such a goose. Never. All right, be seated. Here you go. Take your turn now. There's plenty of stuffing, dressing, and plum pudding for all of you. Martha, dear, sit next to Tiny Tim and make sure he eats plenty. He must get strong and well. If anything should happen to him. Oh, Mother, don't even think that. I'll see that he eats well. Here, Tim. Mm. 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 Quiet. Please, quiet. Such a feast requires a Merry Christmas to us all. God bless us. God bless us. God bless us. God bless us. God bless us, everyone. Spirit, tell me if Tiny Tim will live. If this shadow remain on a target, by the future, the child will die. No, no. Oh, no. Kind spirit, say he will be spared. Why? If he's to die, he'd better do so, and decrease the surplus population. Oh, you use my own words against me. Here's the punch, steaming hot. Take your turn, there's enough for a toast and one after that. A toast, a toast, a toast to Christmas. Mm. Here, I would like to propose a toast to Mr. Ebenezer Scrooge, oh. the founder of our feast, to Mr. Scrooge. No. It's no what? Father. Father. It's not him. The founder of her feast, indeed. I wish I had Mr. Scrooge here. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast upon, and I hope he'd have a good appetite for it. My dear, the children, it's Christmas Day. I'll drink to his home for your sake, and the days, not for his. Long life for him, and a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. He'll be very merry, and very happy, have no doubt. Hmm, come, Ebenezer, there's more to see. Men who keep Christmas in their hearts. Come. Much they saw, and far they went, and many homes they visited, but always with a happy end. In poorhouse, hospital, and jailin, misery's every refuge, the spirit of Christmas left his blessing and taught Scrooge as he went. Presently, they returned to London, and the ghosts of Christmas present dissolved into the mist, and Scrooge stood alone upon the street. As the last stroke of midnight rang, Scrooge remembered the prediction of old Jacob Marley, and lifting his eyes, he beheld the third spirit. A so solemn phantom, 
draped, hooded, and hooded, coming like a mist along the ground <clears throat> towards him. Are, are you the ghost of Christmas yet to come? You are about to show me the shadows of things that have not yet happened, but will happen? Spirit, will you not speak to me? Ghost of the future. Oh, I fear you more than any specter I've seen. Lead on. The night is waning fast, and time is precious to me. Spirit, why have you brought me here again, to Bob Cratchit's home? But it is different. So quiet. What is it, Spirit? What kind of Christmas is this? <laughs> Sorry, I'm late, Mother. I was at the churchyard. I wish you could have gone. It would have done you good to see how green a place it is. But you'll see it often. I promised him. I promised Tiny Tim that we'd walk there on Sundays. Oh, Pop! My little child. My Tiny Tim. Oh, that's cruel. Cruel! Spirit, can't you give me some ray of hope that I may change all of this? That Tiny Tim may live? Spirit, where are we now? Merciful heaven, the churchyard. Desolate, lonely, crumbly graves. Is poor Tiny Tim buried here? Tell me, spirit, are these the shadows of things that will be? Or are they shadows of the things that might be? Spirit, that gravestone to which you point, what is on it? Wait. The name on the grave is... Ebenezer Scrooge! No! No! No, Spirit! Why show me this if I am past all hope? Am I to become like Jacob Marley? Like the other wretched ghosts? Chained? Wandering the earth? Forever? No! No! Spirit, hear me! I'm not the man I was! Tell me that I may change these dreadful shadows. I'll, I'll honor Christmas in my heart. I'll try and keep it all the year. I'll live in the past, the present, and the future, and not shut down the lessons they teach. I pray, please, spirit, that I may sponge away the writing on the stone. I beg you, I'll change, I'll change. I pray, I beg you. I'll change, I'll change, please, I'll change. Why, what's this? My bedpost? I'm home, in my own bed, in my own room. Oh, Jacob Marley, heaven of the spirits, Christmas spirits be praised. I don't know what day of the month it is. I don't know how long I've been among the spirits. I don't know anything. I'm qu quite a baby. Man, I am merry as a schoolboy. I am as giddy as a drunken man. Oh, glorious light, fresh air. Ah, the window. Why, uh, uh, Merry, um, Merry, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year, sir. Boy, boy, what's today? What day is it, my fine fellow? Today? Why, it's Christmas Day, sir. <gasps> Christmas Day? Ah, I haven't missed it. The spirits have done it all in one night. And so they have done it, all in one night. Scrooge and the boy to the poultry shop to buy their pro prized turkey and have it delivered to the Cratchit family as an anonymous gift. Then the new Ebenezer Scrooge dressed himself all in his best and got out into the streets of London. By this time, people were pouring forth and Scrooge regarded all with a delighted smile and a hearty holiday greeting. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! 
By chance, Ebenezer came upon the charity seekers he dismissed yesterday, but today he apologized and made a large donation to their worthy cause, with many back payments included. Mr. Scrooge! He continued on to the home of his nephew, Fred, who is in the midst of his Christmas dinner with his wife and friends. And so, Ebenezer Scrooge rejoined his family and rejoined the family of man. The next morning, he arrived early at his counting house to catch Bob Cratchit coming in late. But was Bob ever late? The clock had struck nine. No, Bob. Quarter past. No, Bob. Finally! Mr. Cratchit? What do you mean by coming in at this time? I am very sorry, sir. I'm behind my time. It shall not be repeated. I was making rather merry yesterday, sir. Bob Cratchit. I'll not stand this sort of thing any longer. Therefore, therefore, I'm about to raise your salary. Oh, please, sir, you're going to raise my salary? But, sir... Wait. No, Bob. I've not lost my senses. I've come to them. A Merry Christmas, Bob. A Merry Christmas that I've given you for many a year. Sit down. We'll discuss your affairs over a Christmas bowl of smoking bishop, Bob Cratchit. Merry Christmas! Scrooge was better than his word. He became as good as a friend. As good as a master. And as good as a man as the good old city ever knew. And a tiny Tim, who, who did, did not, not die, die, he became a second father. And it was always said that Ebenezer Scrooge knew how to keep Christmas well. May that be truly said for all of us. And so, as tiny Tim observed, God bless us. Everyone! Ladies and gentlemen, all through the Holiday Playhouse, not a creature is stirring that doesn't wish our radio audience a merry, merry Christmas. This story was adapted and scored by Anthony E. Palermo. If our little production has provided you with good cheer, then you have only to send Charles Dickens. The true founder of our feast in this fairy tale for all ages, especially our own. This has been a very merry production of Drama Workshop! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.